that's this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 32nd episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, the show where we watch terrible fucking movies and tell you if you should too. I am your host, Mr. Brad Shilgo, joined by my other host, you know him, you love him, Kyle Hinton. <laughs> Knocking things over. On today's episode, we watched a classic from 1993 in a time where martial arts films rule the independent market. Yes. By the one, the only, Godfrey Ho, it is undefeatable. So, this film... And not the Sarah Palin documentary. This is the first film we've done starring the lovely Cynthia Rothrock, a staple of bad kung fu movies in the 90s. Actual kung fu movies. Yes. That's one thing she's got going. She actually knows karate, kung fu, some sort of martial arts of it's not, some. It's not like, you know, Shannon Tweed, where they're just like, "Hey, do action stuff." <laughs> You're pretty. Kick people. <laughs> you showed people your tits in the '80s. Yeah, it's, uh, although I did love No Contest, and I still can't wait to do No Contest too. That movie's amazing. Yeah, so Cynthia Rothrock actually knows martial arts, and so she's actually kicking people's ass in this movie. Actually uh, kicking people's ass in jeans and leather in, jackets. In acid-washed mom jeans. <laughs> Which is delightful to see. <laughs> Let me tell you. Every single time they do like a, a flip or something, and I'm like, how do you do that? There's yeah. no way you should be able to move in this. Well, in the beginning, she's like doing splits and stuff in jeans. And I'm like, how? how? I don't know. It's very impressive. Mm. So this movie, Undefeatable, is about a psycho who kills people. Are you sure he's a psycho? Boy, is he. <laughs> what is it? As input. And put something here. Oh, okay, anything he like does crazy. in the movie? Yes. Anything? It smells so good. Just a shot of his eyes is enough. <laughs> Just this of his face, because he has fucking psycho eyes. Uh, and I think that's how they cast him. They're like, just just show us your eyes. Show us your crazy eyes. And he's like... <laughs> And they're like, well, you got it. Yeah, it is like they, they had to find a guy who knows martial arts. And, yeah. And he does. Yeah, he does. Put in this jacked. Little, put in this little bit from local TV station in Cleveland <laughs> of him teaching self-defense. Grab the hair from behind, pull back, elbow, backhand, two, three tiger claws, knee, push your palm mm -hmm. strike out of the way. Mm -hmm. Now, if you did that for real, of course, he would fight back. <laughs> and, and who had, looks crazy. But what they shouldn't have done was cast somebody that has all those things and then given him that haircut. A pu you mean a, the pube mullet? <laughs> yes, that's a very apt description. Because <laughs> for the second week in a row, we've got a very similar hairstyle on one of our characters. And it's on our hero, it was silly enough. It, on our villain, it's very hard to take him yes. seriously <laughs> when he's like, I will fucking rape and murder your family and I'll fucking... <laughs> No, but like he's got just pubes on his head, like, and he's just sitting there, like, I'm so fucking crazy. I have eyeballs in a fish tank, and I look like balls. <laughs> I don't know. He's fucking. It's insane. I couldn't take him. He's, one, he's one of the crazier, like Don Stroud. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I mean, granted, this came out after Divine Enforcer. Yeah. But Don Stroud, I'd take notes from this guy. Oh, for sure. It's a very. It's a different performance but it's a equally crazy performance mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a different style but equally insane don't leave me mommy undefeatable we open up as every best film does on eight minutes of opening credits over black <laughs> oh while, my god while music plays and it's the same music. If you ever want a way to put your audience to sleep, <laughs> right? this is it. Open your movie with yellow text over black for like four minutes. Thrilling. <laughs> I'm hooked, let me tell you. But no, and then it cuts to a therapist's office. Mm -hmm. And this lady is talking to her therapist, and she's like, My husband, 
he's evil he beats he beats people up for money right basically well, and they, they're they're cutting to what they call death matches he fights for money in a ring anywhere they call them death matches yeah oh and like right. they, they have boxing right. gloves on right. I was like, they're like she's like they, they call them death matches and they cut to it and it's like an official boxing event. <laughs> and like, they have mouth guards? Mouth guards? And if this was a death match, you wouldn't have protective I, I wear. I was like, what movie? You lost me already, all right? Death matches are in well-lit boxing rings with boxing gloves, mouth guards, and they even got little foot kick, like, glove, you know, like, foot booty things on. And I'm like, this is like the lamest, most tame death matches that have ever... This is stupid. Why would you do that? Just bare knuckle brawl in an alley. That's what it is. <laughs> like, yeah. uh. And then, so she's like, yeah, he, he fights for money in death matches. And she's like, well, you should leave him because he sounds like an insane person. <laughs> if you're in danger, you need to protect yourself. Even if that means leaving Paul. No shit. <laughs> yeah. And um, so that's, and then we, and then it cuts back to the ring and they get the finishing blow on that guy. He's fighting and it's Elbow. like on his face. He's like, Ah! Elbow him in the spine? I'm not sure. Yeah, if that like works. he just elbows him in the back and the guy spits out his mouth guard, and that's how you know he's dead. Oh, it's like okay. when the mouth guard okay. comes out, you know he's dead. And then well, oh, I love too in that moment. She goes, he goes, she's like he murders people in the ring for money. Would you talk to him? Maybe you could talk to him. I'd be happy to. Like, she asked the therapist. No! <laughs> and the therapist is like, yeah, bring him in. I'll talk to him. <laughs> that guy kills people for money. You don't just have a little chat, a little heart to heart, a little tete a tete with that guy. No. <laughs> like, fucking There's hell, you call the police. literally committing crimes and yeah. shit. <laughs> She's like, sure, if he's willing. If he was willing. But it sounds to me like that's something he's going to have to come to on his own. I'm like, he's not going to be willing. He kills people for money. <laughs> so stupid. And this, this is right off the bat. I was like, this is so stupid. And then we cut to a grocery store, or like a, a, a food, uh, fast food place. And these guys come in. They stick up the cash register. Oh, God. And a little kid walks out. <laughs> it's like. Hey, Brian. Brian. Who uh, who invested in this movie? Oh, Coke? Was it Pepsi? Coke. Okay. Coke. <laughs> yeah. They, they got the uh, rock and roll nightmare treatment. Yeah, they did. As the little kid comes up. I just want to pay for my delicious Coca-Cola. <laughs> hey, I just want to pay for this. It's on the house, kid. <laughs> That's not what he says. It's like, I just want to, can I pay for my soda? And I'm like, I, I know I was a dumb little kid, but if I see a man with a gun, I'm not coming up anywhere near him. Like, I, I, I would be well, I'd be aware enough, even at that age, to be like, I should I should leave. <laughs> I should get the fuck out of here. Um, and so the kid's like, yeah, or the guy's like, yeah, take it. It's your soda now. Fuck it. Who cares? And then and then our cop walks in. Yeah. We don't know a cop. By the way, what a dynamic uh, criminal team these two are. Because you got like the oh. the, str the like the small like Scr yeah scrawny guy and then, and then that dude is a gigantic human <laughs> and has the world's worst mustache. Yes. It is very disgusting. It's well, like this weird... like like you you think that maybe they're just these two guys are just small like the cop guy is small. The cop guy's average height yeah. and is jacked, jacked as hell. <laughs> yeah. This dude is like a nearly seven foot giant. Yeah, he's huge. I love it. There's a moment where he walks in and, or when he, when he walks right, when he walks in and the guy is, has his gun on the, on the clerk and he, and he goes, give me all your money. And then he just stands there and freezes. Like he doesn't, they didn't give him direction what to do after he delivers his line. And cause we're watching our guy in the background, like get ready to say something. And he just sits there like money. So. And I'm like, you gotta keep acting. You can't just <laughs> freeze. Oh, that wasn't a directive for me? <laughs> like, it's so God. stupid. Hello, darkness, my old friend. So then they, they, the guy yells, suck my dick. Suck my dick! <laughs> and then goes after him, the big guy does. And then they get in a fight and he beats him up. And we were introduced to the fact that he's a cop. Hey, come on, Nick. We gotta go. Hey, <laughs> What's this? Uh, oh. Just a couple of pumps giving me a warm up. I'll see you for police brutality, pig. Yeah, yeah, shut up. These two cops are fucking terrible. Like, 
the worst actors. They have zero chemistry together. Yeah. They have zero chemistry with anybody else in the movie. They have zero <laughs> presence or like ability to emote anything. Fine, stay here all night. If you want to, you can stay here all week. You're making a big mistake, Nick. I don't think so, Mike. You're wrong about this one. She's okay. There's a scene later on, I'm just talking about it now, where the guy's like, I got us basketball tickets. And the guy's like, all right. And they like high five. And it's the most awkward, unnatural interaction between two humans. So what's the good news? I got tickets for tomorrow night's game. Midcourt, fifth row. All right. All right. It's short of like a Ben and Arthur movie that I've like ever seen. Aren't you gonna give me my sugar? <laughs> No. <laughs> you better give me my sugar or I'll somebody tell your boss on you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm telling you here, I'm telling that ought to show him. So we're introduced to this underground street fighting ring. Is this uh we meet Cynthia Rothrock. <laughs> it's it's okay. We introduce we're introduced to her and her gang. Gang. The Red Dragons. Oh my god. So, so everybody here is with a gang. Yeah. And I guess they designate one person in the gang as a fighter. Yeah. And there's like two guys who are like not part of the, the gangs, but are like the fight organizers. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got I got to try to figure out how this works. So they show up and they fight. Did they bet money? Did each gang bet money? Because at the end, she gets paid like 600 bucks. All right. Same game, same rules. Is the money. Winner takes all of it. Who's paying? Who did she get money from? Those two guys. But why? There's not like a crowd they're making money no, off of. No. So who? What are they fighting for? And I'm so confused. I was like, they're just fighting for fight, the fight. All right, whatever. But so they're introduced in there. They're gonna. They're they're two gangs and they're squaring off. It's amazing. Just gene fight. <laughs> yeah, gene fight. I love the way the fight starts. Where we stare at their faces for like 20 goddamn minutes as they stare at each other. <laughs> But the gangs are like clapping together. But it goes on forever. I gotta imagine at some point the gangs were like, are they gonna hit each other eventually? Are we just gonna keep clapping until like it just goes on for fucking ever? <laughs> The objective is if your hand touches the ground, yeah. you lose. Yeah. Which I'll talk about a point later in the movie where I was a little confused on that. But yeah, if your hand, I think is what they say, touches the ground, you mm -hmm. lose. And because like at one point he gets her in like a an arm bar and is like pushing her into the ground. And the guy comes down and like, if your hand touches the ground, you lose. It's like she didn't know that before the fight. <laughs> Don't touch. Don't touch. You lose. Come on. We have to be informed as the audience. I know. And so... uh so she, like, magically, the fact knowing that if her hand touches the ground loose gives her the power to spin around and kick the dude's ass. Come on! Come on! Let's go! Come on! And knock him out mm. and, and wins the fight. So the, she gets the money and then gets arrested. The cops show up. Take her in. Um, and then we cut to, right at that moment, uh, her sister on campus. Oh, well, yeah. We cut to her sister on campus, and her sister's walking, and the buddies show up and say, hey, your sister got arrested. We need you to go get her out of jail. And this basically. is one of at least two times in the movie where they're like, why don't we go to college? <laughs> no, we applied, but they wouldn't let us in. They said our IQs were too high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. But I love in this scene, it's, it's one of the most solid, subtle burns I've seen in a movie in a long time. Is So the professor, who is also the... Her her sister's professor is is the uh, psychiatrist, psychiatrist yeah. that the bad guy's wife is, was going to. She's an abnormal psychology professor or whatever is what she says, doctor. And I love in this. So the <laughs> Rothrock's sister is taking a class with her, and the lady goes, and her friends are there, and the lady goes, uh, "Who are these guys? You uh, you studying for? Or are you doing some research for your abnormal psychology paper?" <laughs> So what are you doing? Some research for your abnormal psychology project? <laughs> uh, these are just some friends of my sister's. All right. Oh, <laughs> and, shit. And the lady's like, no, these are just my friends. <laughs> I 
was like, that is a fucking sick burn on those dudes. <laughs> like, that professor just threw mad shade at those guys for no reason. Third degree. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing? Some research for your abnormal psychology project? <laughs> So then she goes off to the police station, and we cut back to the police station, and we're they're shaking her down. Well, yeah, okay. They're sh First off, it's illegal because it's essentially a gambling practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gambling, basically. And, and street fighting. Which so, isn't so once they were like, "Oh, oh, you're doing this for your your little sister to go to college." What are you guys picking on me for? So I make a little bit of money on the side. Big deal. I have bills to pay. I have a sister in college. That checks out. You're fine. I've been asking around. The story on your sister checks out. No shit. I respect what you're doing. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> like, it's still illegal gambling. Yes. Like, but, and that's what the cop says. He's like, what? You're, the other one, his partner's like, you just gonna let her go? And he's like, yeah, she's, she's, I got a good feeling about her. You're making a big mistake, Nick. I don't think so, Mike. You're wrong about this one. She's okay. Something like that. Nope. Like, I mean, all right. I feel like you should still probably give her something. Like a, well, a, a, some sort of... Spoiler on this end. Like, later, she's, like, going out vindictively kicking people's asses. <laughs> yeah, and he's helping her. <laughs> Your ass is mine. Big mistake. <laughs> very strange. This cop, this cop, these cops, their whole situation is very weird to me. And then, so this, I got confused. And this is a... For one thing, all these dudes look alike to me. Like, the two cops and the bad guy, other than his hair, all kind of look vaguely the same. They're like dark-eyed, dark-haired dudes that are, like, muscly. And then this drew me crazy. Or I thought was nuts, and then it has a reason, and I felt like a crazy person. So I was like, okay, was Karen the girl from the beginning at the psychiatrist? Was that not her? Because she looks like her... And I was really getting the, the women confused, which is a plot point. Not not confused, but I mean, like, the fact that they God, look alike. Imagine how fucking annoying that's got to be as a casting department. Yeah. Find, <laughs> find, some, find, like, 12 people who look like this woman. Yeah. But that, that was so fucking weird. I'm like, God. Who are these women? I'm, is that the one from early? They all look and there's a they look the same, so that the guy can fucking go around and fucking kidnap them all, cause then pretend they're his girlfriend. I was like, wait, what? What are you doing with my wife? What? I'm not your wife, Mister. Shut up, Anna. That's it, man. All right, cool. I'm not just crazy. Like that's on purpose. And it doesn't do shit. And I'm like, what was your plan? You didn't just lobbing grenades into the ocean? So then they get home and there's this scene where she's talking to her sister on the bed about like, she, she says like, do you remember how mom died? Do you remember how mom died? And she, and I was like, was it under a giant <laughs> avalanche of exposition? Cause this fucking scene is just, let yes. me explain our backstory oh to you who lived it. She had no job, no husband, no health insurance. When she got sick, we couldn't even get a good doctor. I promised her then that I'd take care of you and make sure that you get a good education. <laughs> Just fucking her explaining, remember mom died and then now I have to support you and put you through college. You remember that? Yep, it's happening right now. Like, I, I remember. Like <laughs> <laughs> This is like the, oh God. I know some bad writing. I've done some bad writing. <laughs> this place... This place is like this glass of water. It keeps it from flowing freely. This place is just a pool. <laughs> I'll get something to clean that up. It broke. The glass broke, but the water... It's still there. No matter what confines it, it never... I'm gonna need you to back that up so I can hear that again. <laughs> So, then we cut to the bad guy gets Ooh, home. Okay, yes. So, he he gets home. Does he always have, like, flowers? flowers. He flowers? always brings her flowers. Yes. It's like, oh, that's that's nice. This yeah. Blood, the savage murderer yeah. brings her flowers. Yeah. Because um, he's a psycho. And we, we figure out why because it's his childhood. But, um, so, yeah, he comes home. And, uh, and this is where I was like, oh, okay, no, that isn't Karen. Her name's Anna. She's different. Okay, got it. Hey, Anna. Hi, Paul. He, like, comes up to her and uh, he tells her that he drops the line of the movie, which is great. He's, like, sitting there kissing her and he's like, I'm undefeatable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
and I'm undefeatable. <laughs> Great. All right. All right. <laughs> cool. Good. Uh, but he's like coming on her, and she's like doesn't want anything to do with it because she's cooking dinner, and then he rapes her because you have to have that in he's, every he's, <laughs> movie. He's, it's been in our like past three or four yeah. so far. Bad movies, they just do it. That's what they do. Um, See, that's like a checklist. Or like it is. Or what do we got, really what do we got here? Well, it's crappy because latex. it's a very it's a very easy way to make a guy a bad guy. Exploding make miniatures. Yeah. Uh, uh, villain rape. There we go. Yeah, villain rape. Well, because it's it's about as easy of a way to be like, yep, that's the villain as there is. Like it's the shorthandest way to be like, yeah, that's a villain. <laughs> rape somebody, you're a villain. All right. Um, but and then. Uh, so that that happens, and we just set up his. He's a bad guy, and she's like traumatized which, or whatever. Which he gets like this. He gets the steak off the skillet. I'm like, that's not cooked. No, not even like half of it is brown, and then the top <laughs> half is just raw. And I'm like, I mean, if you want to eat your steak real rare, I eat my steak pretty rare. But at least make it even. <laughs> like you know, it's one side raw and one side brown. It's disgusting. And it's again, I was like, it's really hard to take a bad guy seriously. Even in a scene where he's raping somebody, when every time they cut to his face, I see that hair bouncing around. I'm like, this is the worst. This is the worst oh. thing. Because she leaves, like, the next scene, she leaves. Mm -hmm. And there's a shot when he's walking around looking for her, where he f it pans across a bookcase, and there's a picture of the two of them. And in the picture, he's, like, smiling, and she's, like, dead inside. <laughs> and I'm like... I don't think they would keep that picture on there. <laughs> yeah. like, and I, I guess the, the other thing, it's like in, in an abusive relationship like that, usually tend to be pretty good about hiding it where they wouldn't like where they wouldn't have pictures where it's like, well, that woman's clearly terrified and abused. <laughs> like on, you know, they have normal looking pictures. Yeah, like, I, I, I forget. I forget what they said earlier in the film is, is uh, whenever she was doing the whole psychiatric evaluation that something in him changed recently where he like, well he came back from japan he might have had like well i don't know what changed yeah she said something changed recently but because he's been fucked up his whole life because it happened when he was a kid like with his mom that amazing flashback crazy mommy abandonment issues <laughs> i'm with you not your kid what do you want me to do that ain't my problem you can get rid of him for all i care he's my kid if I have to take second place to him, I'm gone. Uh, amazing flashback where he's got that locket that that uh, yeah. is a music box. And he's sitting on their bike, on his bike, and they're just walking around him talking at each other. And it's just like, what is a weird conversation you're having? Like, circling your child, yelling at each other. So then uh, he's looking around looking for her. And then I was like, wouldn't it be great? Like, because he walks upstairs and it holds on a single take. I was like, wouldn't it be great if we just heard a gunshot? And he, she shot him and then the movie ended and it was over. I was like, fucking done. Let's be done with this thing. So she's gone. She ran off. She said, fuck you. You. my psychiatrist told me to leave you so i'm leaving you you'll never find me again and she leaves the locket or the little music box locket thing i, I guess she she wears flowery dresses a lot yeah like always so like, apparently long dark hair flowery dresses yeah. and uh smelling of, of flowers of yeah her perfume is a very particular perfume. so like every time he sees that you go whoa it's her uh, crazy mode i'm in crazy mode right yeah. now yeah <laughs> Anna. Well, and we also, right before he leaves the house for the scene we're about to talk about, he's sitting on the stairs and he's like saying these lines. He's like, mommy, don't leave me. And it's like the most awful, like robotic, like, mommy, don't leave me. Mommy, no. Don't leave me, mommy. I promise to be good. Mommy, take me with you. Yep, he tracks down a woman that looks like her in a parking garage yeah. with with this guy that we find out later is a karate master. The karate, the karate <laughs> world champion. This was Sung Kim. World karate champ? What? What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking coincidence. How, how long does he last against our psychopath? Fucking ten seconds. <laughs> insane when they're like he's the karate world champion i'm like he got his ass kicked and like like everybody else that fights the bad guy does a better job than the karate the, the, world the champion. trailer park dude did a yeah, better job fucking bear does a better job fighting this guy than a karate world champion all right 
but it, I got to give commitment to the stunt double. Yeah. Right? That might have been the actual dude too. Yeah, it might have been him. Yeah, the, this is nothing but stunt actors. Yeah, for the most stunt part. actors. They're so all like, like he gets and stuff. eyes gouged and then thrown up the second and floor of this his nose. parking garage. <laughs> He like yes. honks his nose and but breaks he like it. falls and lands on a van, yeah, and then lands on the pavement. It's a good like, That's a real person a who good did stunt. that. Yeah. But so he, but that kills him because he got his eyes gouged out. Uh, <laughs> and so then he takes the girl, and just like seriously straight out of Divine Enforcer, tie them up, act crazy, yeah, and then kill them, gouge their eyes out, rape and kill them. Yeah, rape and kill them. She goes to fight at a, at, a, at a warehouse, and this is where she fights hey, Bear. Which this scene. Who com- he comes out in a was it bandana, right? And, f- and football gear. He's good. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Fucking full football pads, and I'm like, that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> like, you get to fight in pads. <laughs> like, I feel like that's an advantage. So she get the, I love too because they're like, all right, no weapons, no knives, no guns, knives, bricks, or anything else. And I'm like, no football pads? We're going to add that one in there? You can't wear football yeah. pads? No. Remember, if your hand touches the ground, you're done. It's game time, rookie. Time to place you on injury reserve. And I love, uh, so they're all chanting bear and they fight. And they kick, she beats them. But, but so this fight, I need this moment though, because you said if their floor touches the ground, they lose. The fight starts. The guy goes, start. And Bear immediately puts his hand on the ground and gets in like a three-point football stance. I'm like, did he just lose? Did he just lose? Fight! <laughs> his hand touched the ground. He lost. Um, but no. <laughs> the editing in this is terrible. A lot of it's really bad. And this is mm-hmm. one of those moments where it happens a lot in this particular scene. Where So there's one part in the fight where he like comes at her and she... It's real sl- in slow-mo and bad looking for some of it. And then she runs around the pole and like runs up the wall and kicks him. You know, like she runs up mm-hmm. and spin kicks him off the wall. <laughs> and that happens. And then like eight seconds later, it cuts to... Like it shows the crowd doing stuff. And then like eight seconds later, it cuts to one of her gang members and he goes, Yeah! yeah! Like, like he's reacting to her kicking him, but in space, in temporal space, in the editing, it is so far removed from the event that it's like, is that guy like eight seconds behind everybody else in time? Like, it's like running slow. Like, it's so weird. But she kicks his ass and his girlfriend's like, oh, bear. Oh, bear. As, as they, as they're leaving, crazy stingray is driving by and yeah. like slams on the brake. And he's like, Anna? Yeah. Cause, Cause, Bear's girlfriend looks like her, and so he follows him home. Bear and his girlfriend, and now fucking Stingray is wearing a goddamn denim cutoff vest. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but so he and he grabs his Sting uh, Bear's girl. It's a trailer park. Yeah. Which is high dense population. Oh, yeah, there's people all over the place. Yeah. There should be. Yeah. yeah. And nobody, nobody does anything, and it happens again later. Nobody else ever like notices. Oh, even happening. they were kicking his ass in front of a store. In front. front of a store, like on a busy street, as cars are driving by, and nothing, nobody ever does anything about it. Yeah. So he, he <laughs> kicks Bear's ass and breaks his neck with the dragon claw thing or whatever. <laughs> Oh, and then we cut to a montage of Mr. Cop Man doing karate and, like, kung fu. Because, you know, why not? Yeah, and we got to see him. And I was like, holy shit, because before this, we, up until this point, we haven't ever seen him with a shirt He's on. always wearing the giant and leather he jacket looked, Yeah, on. he just looks like a normal guy. And in this scene, I'm like, holy shit, this dude is fucking jacked. Like, he is absolutely built. And he and we find out he does kung fu or martial arts, too, and which is important. Uh, cause everybody in this movie does Kung Fu. Are you literally, sure? Are you sure everybody? Literally fucking everybody. I'm sure the goddamn janitor at the fucking school that she goes to would probably do Kung Fu if they ever showed up in the movie. Everybody does Kung Fu. At least a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. 
It's it's like a Michael Bay movie. Yeah. Where he, even even at some random yeah. guy in the street knows kung fu. Yeah, and knows how to like could like pick up an assault rifle and like use it right away. It's like what the hell? Yeah. We just watched the cop training for no reason. That's irrelevant. I just said it because I wanted to talk about him being shirtless so and gorgeous. <laughs> but <laughs> it's irrelevant to the movie. The flowing other. hair. Yeah. Then it cuts to they're like at a mall or whatever we were saying or like outside a storefront and it's uh her, her sister karen's or christy's sister karen and like her friend mm -hmm. and our guy just walks up randomly immediately kicks the dudes and yeah like, kicks the dude's ass and like caves breaks his chest, his chest in, in yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he caves his chest in and, and apparently she knows kung fu because yeah I was like, why does she also know? I mean, I guess she would learn a little from her sister, maybe. I guess, sure. But, like, she starts, like, I'll fight you. And I'm like, wow, everybody, like, fucking do it. And uh, so they fight for a few minutes, and he breaks her leg. And then goes and grabs her, and it cuts. But, yeah, this is the one where the whole time there's, like, cars driving by. It's like, there's a man just beating the shit out of two people in front of, like, everybody's seeing this. It's the middle of the day. Not a single person is like, 911, uh, this man is killing people. <laughs> Like, i fucking weird. But, um, so, like, cut to later, we say, the cop tracks down Cynthia and says, we think Karen's dead. We yeah. need to come identify the body. We think your sister was murdered. I need you to identify the body. And in this scene, the only thing I can think of is, Cynthia was like, you, you get one shot of this. You get one shot of this. Go. Because, <laughs> like, the camera does not change. Of her reaction? Yes. Yes, and it's terrible. This is the one. I wrote this down. I was like, what the fuck is re her reaction to him telling her? She's like... You, you, that can't be right. We think your sister was murdered. I need you to identify the body. He did be wrong. You, you, that can't be, wrong. be right. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> no. It's like the most, like, there's zero emotion but, happening. By the way, the, the coroner and the medical examiners there, they are the creepiest fucking people. I want to warn you, this isn't going to be easy. What was those characters? They're in it for a shot. One shot. There's a shot of them. And the guy even says something. Uh... <laughs> This isn't going to be easy. <laughs> and then he like pulls down the thing because she's got to identify her dead sister's body. And it's these two fucking creepy corners. And I'm like, why are they like that? They're like all up on each other. And he's like, this isn't going to be easy. But then after that reaction, they're still just as creepy. And then they put it back <laughs> over. So fucking weird. This is when she gets crazy vindictive. Yeah, and, and she just... goes out, yeah, and just starts finding dudes she thinks could have done it. Because, like, guys she knows, like, either beat up women or stuff, like you know, that, like, abuse women and stuff. She just, like, tracks him down. It's like, I'm going to fucking kill, kill everybody. I'm going to kill everyone. Uh, and she finds the first guy on barrels, which is great. <laughs> on a, it's like a barrel The fight. entire time, like, th th these things had to be put down with adhesive or something because these <laughs> barrels should be yeah, tipping over. rocking and stuff. Yeah, or they're full, maybe. I don't know, like, full of oil or something. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the introduction to that first guy lee or whatever he's like doing karate on a box like just forms on a box and everybody's losing their mind yeah, over how awesome he yeah, is and then so they throw cool. an apple at him and he catches it and, and crushes, crushes it. it and they're like oh my god you're the best doing anything so stupid these people are so easily impressed yeah they really are and so she's like well i went after lee because he's an expert in or he he's somebody who's known to uh attack women well that and he does eagle oh, claw yeah, kung fu karen was killed by lee how do you know that they're called the eagles because lee is an expert in eagle claw kung fu so karen was killed by someone using eagle claw uh, and the cop's like, look, I tested him. It's not him. We tested, like, his skin. skin. They say skin. But he's, like, wearing, glo like, spiked gloves the yeah, whole time. Yeah, and I'm like, like, claws? I don't know. But And I guess that's what they thought, because, like, gouging the eyes. Whatever. 
But you're like, it's not him. And and the cop goes, I, I need to share some classified information with you. That's not how this works. <laughs> not how it works. But his next line is, I study the martial arts. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to share some classified information with you. I've studied the martial arts. That can't be classified information. <laughs> <laughs> chance that's classified cool guy <laughs> these movies these movies but sorry but i don't know what happened i just uh, demon the classified information is that they've done research on the bodies and realized that the person killing them from the bruises is doing it with a certain martial arts technique and whoever's doing this is definitely not using the eagle technique the marks are different i don't know what this is but i have an idea who might and I'm like, really? That's something the cops would look at? <laughs> Maybe if you're a martial artist cop, I guess, but like, fucking very weird. Listen, if you get any more ideas, please just call me first. In the meantime, I'll keep you up to date on our progress. Now go home or I'm gonna put you in jail. They bring in a kung fu expert, and he's like, there's only three guys who know this special type of kung fu. This claw is a seldom seen variety of the Chinese dragon claw. And I know of only three Americans who use it. And they try them all and they're all not the right guy. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. all right. <laughs> one scene. <laughs> the one scene where they go and they're knocking on doors and they, they get the one the oh, side the, <laughs> the buddy <laughs> cop goes up to that guy's apartment. Is it a fucking wheelchair? Yes. I'm looking for Joe Petroni. Michelle, let me talk. like yeah i'm the guy you're looking for and he's like no nope. <laughs> i'm joe petroni what do you want it's not you buddy oh let me tell you it's not you <laughs> but he just looks so disappointed that he does the guy doesn't have arms he's like okay oh i, I need a second <laughs> I'm dying. You got me dying. That's so good. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's terrible. That guy has no arms. That's unfortunate. But I feel incredibly false right now. I know. It's warm in here. <laughs> and there's a scene before that where <laughs> I just love because the guy's like, "Yeah, it's me. I'm Joe, whatever." And he's like, "Oh, <laughs> well, never mind," and just like leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit they were a bunch of punks now they're a bunch of crackheads and they do anything they want now they're a bunch of crackheads so yeah eventually they call the psychiatrist to track this guy down which is like why were you not using but they this is where they talk about uh <laughs> this is this is where they're trying to be hey here's our buddy buddy moment i got the tickets to the basketball game yeah you know it's a basketball game because they're, they're center court yeah but this is just something I noticed that drove me crazy is the ambulance that they had whenever they were ta whenever they were tagging the uh, <clears throat> karate champion body is Prince George's County, which is in Maryland. Where's the closest basketball team? Maryland. Maryland. I don't know. It's Philly 76ers. How far? That's like, I mean, probably a good hour plus in oh, traffic. Yeah. But it, like probably two, uh, relative to that, I have no clue. I'm gonna, but it's it's way longer. They're not in a than place it where it has a team. And I was just like, like in New York. That's just go to a fucking Nationals game or something. <laughs> You're in, go to a sport that's in your fucking state. Yeah, tell them how to live their life, Kyle. You're driving too far for your sporting events. Get your shit together. <laughs> and besides, are you gonna go watch the 76ers lose like they do every season? Oh! <laughs> I don't know. Were they any 
good in 94? I have no fucking clue. They suck now. GV Reeby drinking game. Whenever somebody says piece of cake in a movie, drink. Because the guy does it in this one. Impressive. Piece of cake. The cop goes when he's looking to try to find the place. He goes to one of the dojos and he walks in and there's like five dudes there. And, and the guy's like, that's the cop. Beat him up. Shit, that cop's here. You guys take care of him, and I'm at here. Guys, teach this guy a lesson. And I'm like, you're gonna beat up a cop at the place where you work? Like, you, they can find you there, and you're gonna get in a lot of trouble. This just confused me. She says that all the victims had red hair. Well, look at these pictures. I mean, if you didn't know better, you'd think these women were related. He has a fixation with one woman. Red hair, young, petite. No. That was brown hair. Very. I'm 99% sure they all had brown hair. <laughs> I, I am fairly confident that the psychiatrist had brown hair up until the point where they said red hair and then she dyed it. Yeah, it was very strange. I was like, the hair's just, okay, sure. And so she starts to get an inkling, like, maybe this guy is that guy that my one patient was talking about. Because she, she realized they are all wearing flowery dresses and hair. And that's how they figure it out. And like, holy shit, it's this guy. And she, she tells him... Like, they, they find the guy's address, and she's like, she's like, all right, I'm going to go over there. And she's like, I'm coming with you. Um, if you're going to go to their house, I'd like to meet you there. No, you're not. And they're like, no. And she's like, well, if you can want my help, I'm coming. Well, this is police business, Jennifer. Nick, I can't continue helping you unless I do. All right. But park down the block. I'm like, why, why would you, why do you what, have to go to help? Yeah, what, how would you help them apprehend this guy? Yeah. Yeah, and, and like, what, why are you being such a dickhead? Like, if you want me to keep helping you, I'm coming. Like, why are you so fucking amped to get to that guy's apartment? Okay, whatever. And so they break in and they find in the guy's place and he's not there. Uh, and they're like, we'll dust it for prints. And I'm like, why do you need, pr I guess, to match? Okay, sure. Um, because the mail has, like, his name on it. You now know his name. Like, you know, yeah. and you can find him really easily. But th then they decide to go, since they have his name and everything, track down his, his, uh, the, his bookie for fights. Yeah. Yeah, the bookie as they're getting to his office left to go check on this dude because he's not going to his meetings. Yeah, and this is where we are seeing with how fucking crazy this guy is. Because he gets into the the the, the warehouse that that Stingray, which mm -hmm. I got a really funny random story. So I'm watching this film. It's not random. It makes perfect sense. I didn't realize the guy's name was Stingray because I think they first say it like pretty late in the movie, like just where we are, uh, which they say his name's Stingray because he's notorious for being brutal. He's pretty brutal. That's why they call him the Stingray. And I'm like, are Stingrays notoriously brutal? <laughs> like, they're just... But, so funny story. Very early in this film, when I was watching it on YouTube, a little card, you know, little cards that pop up in the top right occasionally? Mm -hmm. One popped up, came out, and said, would you like to watch documentary about Steve Irwin's life? And I was like, this seems very random on this film. <laughs> and then we get to the point later, and the guy's like, his name's Stingray. And I'm like, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, who put that in there? What a fucking weirdo. <laughs> this is a really random thing that happened to me. All right. Finally, I've been trying to get a hold of you all week. What have you been doing? I've been busy. So the guy, the bookie, goes to check out the warehouse. Where it's where he, he find finds Kyle? eyes in an aquarium. And then he finds a body in a yeah. trunk. I love, he's asking, he's asking the tough questions. He's like, why does he have eyeballs in an aquarium? I'm like, that's a good question, dude. What stingray have eyeballs in a fish tank for? Yeah, and then he finds the woman's, but he sees her legs sticking out of a box. And he's like, what's that? And I'm like, very clearly a dead person. Like, why do you, it's not that, not that hard to figure it out. So he goes over there and then what's his name shows up behind him. He's like, Rah. Shit. You looking for me, Lou? And kills him. And right? takes his eyes and takes drops his him. eyes and drops him. <laughs> drops him in the aquarium. 
So then this is where he kidnaps the psychiatrist because he found her name and address on the mail that he had at his house. So he goes there. Amazing kidnapping. <laughs> yeah, it's so great because this is again in the universe everybody fucking knows karate. He like kills the receptionist and then she the the doctor was like, oh my god, and then he turns around and he's there and she starts fucking kung fu fighting him. <laughs> Wait, You're how, a psychiatrist. How do you know Kung Fu? What is going on? Um, but then so he grabs her and takes her off. Takes her to the warehouse. And uh, she, this scene is the only good, legitimately good scene, I think, in the whole movie. Because she's a really good, she's actually a pretty good actress. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole scene with her back at the warehouse where she's like f trying to figure him out and figure out what will keep her alive. Like what she needs to do for him not to kill her. And so first she's like, pretending to be anna. anna because she's got perfume from anna that came in the mail or something so she smells like her she's like pretending to be anna don't be ridiculous sweetheart paul of course i love you of course i love you sweetheart i wore your favorite perfume and that's not working and i'll give you a nice massage okay And then she remembers he has all these super serious mommy issues. So she fucking like starts slapping him and like and like telling him to go to his room and he's like kind of going with it. Ah, I will be you. How many times have I told you to behave yourself? Thank How you. many times have I told you to clean up your room? I'm sorry, mommy. I won't do it again, I promise. And like it's this really long, tense scene of her like <laughs> trying to get away and him following her around and her being like now 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 paul you're being a bad boy and like it, it's actually kind of well really well done and terrifying because she's a really good actress also in kinky yeah. <laughs> fair enough now you stay here you be a good boy and your mommy's gonna go out and get some food okay okay buddy. um but it's very, it's actually a really good scene. So he ties her up basically eventually and goes to get, leaves to go get food. And she gets a phone call. She has a cell phone in her purse and she's able to get it. Not, by the way, 90s G1 or G2 style cell phone. Yeah, it's a really early that's cell gotta phone. That's got to be, that's a cancer phone. That's <laughs> <laughs> cancer. Um, but so she, uh, she's able to answer it with her foot and yells to Cynthia. I'm at this address. Cops. They're at this address. Yeah. I'm going to go to this address. Yeah. Stingrays got me. I'm in the old Raycor warehouse on 10th and 18th Street. Call the police. I'm on my way. Yes, please listen carefully. My name is Christy Jones, and I need you to get a message to Sergeant Nick DeMarco immediately. Tell him that Stingray is holding Jennifer captive at the old Raycor warehouse on 10th and 18th. Do you got it? And says it, and then and, and Cynthia heads there. She gets there. And she's able to get her out a little bit, and then there's a great reveal scene where she gets her out, and then now the person in the change is backwards, and Stingray walks up, and he's like... I would have been like, that's not how I yeah, left Yeah, it's you. very clearly not her, and that's not how I left you. Mommy? Huh? <laughs> and it turns around, it's her, and there's a fight scene ensues. Craziness, kung fu, kicking, punching, K sword fighting. Yeah. <laughs> it's... I kept writing, I'm like, stop fighting him and just run away. <laughs> just mm. fucking run away. Like, what are you doing? There's a great classic shot where they kick a box of packing peanuts in the air. Oh, yeah. And it rains down it, and they just freeze frame holes their poses in it. Kind of great. <laughs> uh, and then the cops show up. Our two cops show up. <laughs> they're, just, throws, they're shooting at him and he's hiding behind a thing and he throws his coat out and both of the idiot cops are like, blah, 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 blah. It's like very, Die, coat. It's very clearly just a coat flying through the air. Like, guys are idiots. And then uh, our buddy gets shot in the neck and dies. Breathe. Breathe. Breathe faster. Fuck him. I hated him. I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> I hated that guy. Yeah, but then he gets away. He gets away, and they take our lady to the hospital. 
uh, the doctor is in the hospital, mm-hmm. and they're like, "All right, we gotta, we'll put some security on our door. We gotta go f- try to find this one guy. cop. One cop. I want someone on this door 24 hours, no visitors. Yes, sir. Who they didn't even tell what the guy they don't want in there looks like, <laughs> apparently, because <clears throat> as they walk out, our bad guy is leering at a drinking fountain. I'm gonna kill him, Dick. The entire time he's like not drinking up. You gonna, you gonna drink that, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> the worst thing you've done in this movie is waste all that water, man. <laughs> but he get he shows up with a mask, and like I said, the guy just lets him in the room. I guess mm-hmm. he kills the guard, steals the girl. So what happens then? She's... Oh, he forgets his sunglasses. <laughs> it's so dumb. Oh, what? I forgot my sunglasses. Oh, forget. That's the way that they find out that she got kidnapped. This guy's like, oh, I forgot my sunglasses. <laughs> Guess we'll go back to the room. By the way, tons of people walking by on this in this hallway. Nobody sees somebody bleeding to death in, in the this room. room. Yeah, there's that's a, wide open. Yeah, because you like cut the guy's neck or whatever, gouged out his eyes, and he's just on the floor flailing, bleeding to death, and not a single doctor. You know, they might kind of be on the lookout for something like that in a hospital. <laughs> And I love, he's like, he's dead. I'm like, you're not even going to try to get him help. You're in a hospital. He's got about as good a chance as because he's moving and whatever. It's really annoying. So they chase after the guy. That's their bad guy. Uh, and they chase him to like the basement or mm-hmm. something, I guess. And this is where the big this is Okay, happens. so the dude has a knife, a crazy knife that I we've never seen before. It's like a brass knuckle. And knife. I was like, what the fuck kind of knife is that? Yeah. But he's got her, and he's got a knife to her neck, and they, they they come around the corner at each other, and a cop's got the gun on him. And I'm like, just shoot him in the head. Just shoot him in the head. This thing that always bothers me in movies, when he has a shot like that, where he's absolutely 100% going to put a bullet right in that dude's forehead with zero percent. Like, he's not going to miss. It's not like he's far away. Not like this distance from each other. And I'm like, and the guy's got a neck, knife to her neck. I'm like, what are the odds that if you shoot that dude right in the forehead, he's going to do anything other than just die? instantly and you're good like i don't get that in movies where they're like okay i'll put my gun down so you don't co- just shoot him just fucking shoot him bullets are faster than knives but she gets she gets away enough to where the cop and him are now in this epic yeah. knife fight yeah this so okay, good so oh. so from put the gun down to the end there is no words anymore. It's no. just grunts, grunts. And, and, and just guttural, guttural sounds. screams. Yes. And it's the most it's 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 all all the sounds and visuals of a gay porn without the insertion. <laughs> There's insertion at one point. <laughs> right. 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 But I mean like their fight scene, if you took the sound of it and just kind of blurred Glisten it. Glisten with oil. Yeah. Just kind of blurred it so you couldn't tell what they were doing. They could be fucking like, you don't know. <laughs> Start putting up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But God, they just scream. Every it's just ten minutes of. Rah, 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 rah. The, and the, the second their clothes get a little damaged, they're like, "I gotta rip these off now." Get this shit off. By the way, by the way, Stingray is wearing a button-up and tie. Yeah. And he just rips it off with one hand. Yeah. All right, dude's, <laughs> dude's fucking jacked. <laughs> And there's, this is a great moment where, uh, he, uh, he, uh, well, he does the crazy knife, psycho knife, knife lick, which is great. But he also, this shot is maybe the best single shot in the whole film. It is a close up on our cop and a fist. <laughs> Comes from the side of the frame in slow motion and goes, <laughs> and the guy like spits 
and then the fist goes out, and our guy's like, and then the fist comes back in again. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid looking. <laughs> it looks so bad. <laughs> uh, all right, they get into okay. They get into a bizarre holding, uh, like a hold match. Yeah, where he like a cop stops the knife and then grabs him by the face. And for a solid five seconds, the dude's just like, oh, right, I have another hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so fucking stupid. And uh, so then eventually he they, he wrestles him in a way where he slams him against the wall and slams his eye into... A Cynthia comes in. Or Cynthia, right. She, she comes in and starts whipping oh, the towel the around. Towel. That's right, she whips the towel around his arm and, like, stops him from stabbing him, like Indiana Jones. <laughs> I thought she was going to rat tail him. Then, like, then, then they, they wombo combo on him. Yeah. <laughs> where you at? Where you at? <laughs> Happy feet. That's not Fox. Whatever. I'm fucking get your Falco. memes straight. <laughs> Falco. Jesus Christ, my memes are way out of control. Wombo combo! That ain't Falco. That ain't Falco. Oh, oh, oh! 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 So you see, yeah, she, they, they, they wombo combo him into the wall, and it's a coat hanger or a nail or something on the wall right in the eyeball. So now he's blind. We'll look at this poetic justice. He's been gouging people's eyes out all movie. And then they keep fighting him, and they get to, like, this weird crane thing. <laughs> yeah. it, like, I don't even know what it is. It's like a meat hook thing from, like, a butchery, but, like, it's in a, a hospital. I don't know. Uh, and, cop comes in, yeah. stops him from tiger clawing her or whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever claw it is. Eagle claw. Whatever. Modified eagle claw. I don't know. He kicks his face into another hook. <laughs> yeah. It's other eye. Gone. Onto a giant treble hook thing. Ah! 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 And uh, and hits the crane button, and it raises them up like, like the a air. like a prize grabber. <laughs> yeah. It's the world's the most disturbing prize. Prize crab. And as he's as he's being drug off, they uh, okay, here's uh, the one liners. Uh, 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 the best one liners ever. Keep an eye out for you, Stingray. Yeah. See ya. Keep an eye out for you, Stingray. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> God. Classic. Yep. Finn. Oh no, not Finn. They go to the cemetery and uh Go to see Karen's yep. grave. We beat him. We got him, Karen. Yep. And she hangs up her spikes. No more red dragoning for her. And then there's a great comedy beat. The, the guy's like, I told you we can't apply for college. Our IQs are too high. Hey, Christy. You think we should really apply to college? I told you, man. Our IQs are too high. Why well, signed you all up? You're, you start Monday. Go ahead and laugh. I enrolled you guys. You all start Monday. I, I, I'm forcing you to go to college. And then, and then they're like, well, you're not going to go either? Cops like, actually, she is. I signed her up, too. Yeah, it's you. I enrolled you, too. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're all going to <laughs> Against our will. None of us knew, but we're all going to college. Jump high five, freeze frame in a cemetery. The end. <laughs> Fucking movie sucks. It's bad, bad. Uh, it's bad, bad, except for the last ten minutes of just absolute bliss. It's got beats. Like there's, this is one of those in ones where when bad, bad ones happen, where there's ten minutes of this movie or fifteen minutes of this movie that are really entertaining, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah. And you know, you could, a lot of this is just boring as fuck, waiting yeah. for shit to happen. Yeah, it's not this, great. This doesn't have uh, Eric Estrada and J. Michael Vincent, J. Michael Vincent reading it from his script. Yeah. <laughs> What's happened to your face? Bad. Bad. We finally had one. It's been, I don't a know, while. since like episode eight. <laughs> We've had like 20 good beds in a row, like I think. A temptation, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. That probably would have been the last one. So it took AIDS for us to have the last <laughs> bad bed. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to remind you, if you want a weekly podcast that talks about movies, video games, comic books, everything in the world of media. We don't do that so much. We do occasionally on Patreon. Okay. You can subscribe to us and support us there. We do it a little bit. But these guys do it great. They do it every week. Three Wise Media, Three Wise Radio. 
They go by both. But check them out on Facebook, on iTunes. Great podcast. Good friends of the show. I'm on there now and then. They're never on here because that's not what we do. <laughs> Maybe one day. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, check them out. It's a great podcast. Also, check out Movie Versus. It's a podcast. It's another podcast where they pit two terrible movies against each other <laughs> and then argue about them. Uh, it's a good, fun time. Oh, we got some fan art. I'm going to slap oh, yeah, some of it in. Put them that in there. Just going to slap mm. it in all over the place. Got lots of it. I can't even say thanks to all the people because all their names, there's there's a bunch of them. So I'm just going to put a bunch of them in and you get to enjoy them. <laughs> I post them on our Facebook and Twitter. So if you want to follow us there, you can see them when we get them as opposed to... You don't know. You have no clue what this does to my <laughs> self-esteem. <laughs> Kyle just sits. I've seen it. He has a he has a shrine. Just he prints them all out and constant. just jerks off. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the fan art. Really appreciate all that, guys, including the fan art that is now our current avatars. And every every piece of fan art we get captures us in some. Oh, uh, I know. Or in another. some way, from the stuff that like our current avatars, which are super. Um, uh, in depth and like really awesome to even to the one where you spend five minutes like somebody did Scarface made a thing of me rubbing ice cream on my nipples I don't even know but it's it's great so it doesn't matter we don't always tweet them all out but they're always great and they always make me laugh but anyways thank you guys thanks for watching thanks for supporting us we'll be back again in two weeks with another review until next time keep watching movies just not undefeated or just, just in chunks just yeah. watch a little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>